I am Will Fitch and I will be telling you about the plasticizer controversy. I will cover what a plasticizer is and how they work, why they were brought into use, why we should be worried about the use of phthalates in particular, what the government is doing to limit their risk and the up and coming alternatives. What is a plasticizer? A plasticizer is an additive used in the production of polymers to increase the fluidity of the product, effectively making them more flexible. They work between the segments of the base polymer and act as a sort of lubricant, allowing the chains of polymer to move around each other easier, which is made easier to understand from the simplified visual on the left. Adding a plasticizer can bring new uses to the same plastic. For example, polychloroethane, or PVC as it's more commonly known, is used as window frames and drain pipes. But if you add a plasticizer, it can also be used for wellies. Esters. Phthalate esters are the largest chemical class of plasticizers, with DEHP and DIMP being the most important plasticizers globally. These two phthalate esters are commonly used in the film, sheets, and coated fabric market sector, producing products such as tablecloths, tarpaulin, shower curtains, and office supplies. So all of us are more than likely to be exposed to them and their uses every day. Specific phthalate esters can also provide UV resistance which is essential in products like tarpaulin, mentioned earlier. Whilst phthalate esters are not the only plasticizers that could be used to give polymers these attributes, phthalates offer the best performance at the lowest cost, as well as being readily available on large scales. The big issue with phthalates. If you Google search phthalates, the majority of the results will be articles or websites detailing how harmful phthalates are for you. Being widely used, human exposure is very common, but how do they enter our body? Originally, it was thought that ingestion was an important way that we are affected by phthalates. But phthalates are also found to be present in residential air and can be found in medical devices which contribute to exposure. In multiple studies, phthalates, or the species they break down into, were found in humans, showing that phthalates do enter the body. The body can break down phthalates and excrete them through urine, but in a study of urine samples from the United States from 1988 to 94, it was found that less of the higher molecule weight phthalates were present in the urine, suggesting that these were still left unbroken down in the body. This is a problem as in animal studies where rodents were exposed to phthalates, multiple severe side effects were found. For example, delayed entry into puberty, testicular lesions and epidermal deformation which are the tubes which connect the testes to the body. In a separate study, it was found that phthalates target several pathopsychological features of GDM. The pathogenesis of GDM has been linked to weight gain, insulin resistance, and pancreatic cell dysfunction, which can lead to hyperglycemia. To reduce phthalate exposure, in 2019, an old regulation from the restriction of hazardous substances was amended by the UK government to include plasticizers, particularly four phthalates which are used to soften PVC. The regulation states that by July of 2021, no products containing these chemicals can be placed on the market and you could be liable to prosecution if you do. This means that new, non-toxic plasticizers are need to fill the market. Some non-toxic plasticizers derived from the hydrogenation of castor oil and epoxidized soybean oil were compared with the to common toxic plasticizers in a study from 2018. They compared the tensile strength, exudation and water absorption of plastics with each plasticizer and found that using a combination of the two non-plastic, non-toxic plasticizers can compare with the controlled toxic plasticizers, even doing better in some fields, showing how they could be viable as a replacement. This is shown in the bar charts they produce, where the blue bar is the control and the purple is the mixture. Hopefully more of these replacement plasticizers can be found, which can completely replace, replace phthalates in all uses and eliminate all risk.
In conclusion, steps are being taken by both scientific researchers and the government to make plasticizers safer for human use. There still is a long way to go. I don't think any of us could live without them, so this is a very important field of study for the continued health of everybody. Thank you for listening.